Okay, so in this uh, in this section, I want to talk about what we call the Cauchy criterion for series, which is literally just if you apply the Cauchy criterion to the sequence of partial sums of a series, and then you know use the expression of the partial sums in terms of the series itself, you get a slightly different phrasing of the Cauchy criterion for series, and so that's what we use to determine whether a series is Cauchy, and of course the same facts about um, Cauchy sequences apply to Cauchy series, essentially, uh, in so far as they apply to the sequence of partial sums. And uh, we'll also just see a small fact about series, which is that um, for a series to converge, the terms must converge to zero, okay? So let's phrase the Cauchy criterion for series. So um, this is uh, what they call definition 14.3. <clears throat> so we say a series sum of a n is Cauchy if the sequence s n of partial sums is Cauchy. Right, so let's remind ourselves what that means, right? Let's apply the definition of a Cauchy sequence to the sequence of partial sums, right? So uh, what that would give us is, so IE for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N such that for all N and M greater than capital N, we have s n minus s m is less than epsilon, right? Um, where here, um, the partial, uh, the s n and s m are, are actually partial sums of the series, right? So this is what I was saying. This is how we sort of adapt the definition. I mean, this isn't really a new definition at all, but uh, it's just more of like a, a handy, thing to remember about series that you know you can sort of phrase the Cauchy criterion in this particular way. So let's substitute in the expressions for SN and SM. And of course let's assume you know here you can actually uh, sort of assume without loss of generality that N is bigger than M. Um, so actually or at least N is like at least as much as M. So we can say like we can kind of because we're free to relabel N and M depending on which one's bigger. So, um, and, and this obviously, this expression doesn't change because it's in an absolute value. So uh, we can sort of assume that N is greater than or equal to M here. And, uh, and then we can say, so, or equivalently, if the absolute value of the sum, right, so when you take the difference of the partial sum SN and the partial sum SM, right? A lot of the terms in the series cancel out because remember SN is just the sum of the terms all the way up to um, N and SM is the sum of the terms all the way up to M. And here, because I, it's useful to omit the like starting index and everything because um, we're not actually assuming that the indexing starts from M here. It's, they're, they're like different variables. So you'd have to use some other letter like J or something, or maybe K, uh, if you weren't already using K for something else. So, but basically what you're left with here in this expression, right, after those terms cancel out is just the sum of the terms in between M and N, right? So this would be um, the sum from, let's say K equals M to N of a K is less than epsilon, right? So this is just literally a M. Oh, it's not actually perfectly, uh, oh yeah, it's actually M plus one here because S, um, AM actually cancels out uh, from SM and SN. So you have AM plus one plus all the way up to AN, right? So, this is what the difference looks like for series in terms of the terms themselves in the series, right? We've written 
this expression here in terms of the ANs or AKs, depending on how you're indexing it. And uh, that can be convenient uh, when analyzing series. Okay, so that's the Cauchy criterion for series. And there's sort of a, um, an immediate consequence, right? Which is that, uh, <clears throat> so this is corollary Uh, what I think they call corollary 14 point. Oh, okay, right. Let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So because we know, so this is actually theorem 14.4, a series converges if and only if it satisfies the Cauchy criterion of uh, definition 14.3, right? What we just talked about. So a series must satisfy that condition in order to converge. This is because um, SN converges if and only if it is Cauchy, right? So there's not, not much to, the, to this theorem. Uh, not much to the proof, at least, but it's kind of an important uh, statement to make. So, and then there's a corollary of this, which is that um, if the series A n converges, then the limit of A n is zero. Okay, and this is because. Um, a n is Cauchy is Cauchy. So for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N such that um, S n absolute value of S n minus S m is less than epsilon. But in particular, we could take um, we could take n to be m plus one in that expression, right? If we go back here. Of course, the Cauchy criterion means this has to be true for all pairs of like N and M that satisfy this, right? But in particular, what that tells us is that if we just take N equals M plus one, we just end up with like a single term here, right? So, so we're allowed to you know, invoke this because we know the Cauchy criterion is true over here in this context, right? We know A N is Cauchy, so we're allowed to invoke the definition and, and take N equals M plus one in particular and examine the consequences, right? So, so um, S, let's say M plus one minus S M is less than epsilon, right? Uh, for all M greater than N, i.e. the absolute value of, because this difference here is literally just A M plus one, right? Uh, is less than epsilon for all n greater than n, right? So this shows that a n approaches zero as n goes to infinity. Okay. So I want to be very clear about one thing. All right. This is a big, big caution. For the series a n to converge. It is necessary, but not sufficient that a n converge to zero. All right. So this is another. This is a case where people so off frequently get confused between the sequence of terms and the sequence of partial sums. Okay, the terms must go to zero for the series to converge. But if they go to zero, if you take a random series and the terms go to zero, that does not tell you that the series necessarily converges, okay? Classic example, right? So a classic example uh, of where this, uh, where the reverse direction fails is uh, the harmonic series, right? This diverges two plus infinity, but the terms approach zero, okay? 
very important not to get confused. If you just take a random series and show that the terms approach zero, you've done effectively nothing as far as telling whether the series converges goes, okay? And moreover, actually, if AN converges, right, then of course the terms themselves, AN, approach zero. But that doesn't mean that the series approaches zero. It doesn't mean the series converges to zero. The series can converge to any number you want, right? Because you're adding together the numbers AN, right? So like one over N squared converges to a positive number, okay? Specifically, it actually converges to, I think, pi squared over six, right? Which is greater than zero, even though one over N squared itself converges to zero, right? So just do not mix up the terms, the sequence of terms and the sequence of partial sums. In every definition we make, pay attention to whether we're talking about the sequence AN or the sequence SN, okay? Because if you don't, then you might uh, confuse which one is relevant and that's almost always a fatal mistake. So uh, in the next few videos, we'll talk about some common, uh, you know, techniques for telling whether series converge or not, which you've probably heard of from uh, your calculus classes in the past.